the Eucharistic miracle of Simbala, Spain, in the year 1370. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John 6:51. In the kingdom of Aragon, part of modern-day Spain, there lived a priest who found it challenging to believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. He would often wonder if Jesus was truly present in the consecrated bread and wine at Holy Mass. No matter how much he tried to resist the temptation of unbelief, he never succeeded. One could plausibly sympathize with the struggle of the priest. It was a time of great upheaval for the people of Spain. For centuries, they were constantly assailed with wars against the invading Moors. Spiritually drained, wounded, and bruised, their faith was undoubtedly shaken. In 1370, the priest, Father Mosin Tomash was the rector of the church, Iglesia de Purificación de Nuestra Señora, the church dedicated to the presentation of Mary. Minuscule in structure, the church is located in the tiny village of Simbala, a village of the community of Calatayud, in the province of Zaragoza. As of the 2021 census, it has a small population of 93 individuals. It is in this little village that our Lord Jesus manifested his marvelous wonder to the humble villagers. One Sunday, while celebrating Holy Mass, Fr. Tomash was once again troubled by doubts concerning Christ's actual presence in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. After saying the words of consecration, he was stunned to witness the sacred host transform into real flesh and the sacred blood of our Lord flow from it. The holy blood of our Lord poured onto the corporal completely soaking it. Filled with deep sorrow and repentance, Father Tomash began to weep for his lack of faith. The congregation saw that Father Tomash was very sad and in tears. Looking at the distressed priest, some people came towards the altar. They were terrified to see the sacred host dipped in liquid blood and the corporal soaked in blood. Then, regaining his strength, Father Tomash confessed to the people of his doubt and how God had worked such an extraordinary, almost unheard of a prodigy in their presence. Following the Eucharistic celebration, the relic was taken in a solemn procession and the news of the miracle quickly spread in the nearby towns. Father Tomash was indeed sincerely grateful to God for helping his unbelief. This incident was so powerful that it not only strengthened his weak faith but also reaffirmed the dogma of the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. After this heavenly experience, he retired as a hermit in the monastery of St. Thomas and devoted the rest of his life to prayer and penance. The Bishop of Tarazona, Pedro Pérez Calvillo, placed the host and corporals inside a tabernacle for veneration. In the early days, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, the faithful would come from the neighboring parishes with their parish crosses in solemn procession accompanying the relic. The miracle is also called Most Holy Doubtful Mystery or Santissimo Mysterio Diubio. During the reign of King Don Martin, many wars were fought between Aragon and Castile. In 1385, he requested the sacred host be moved to the royal chapel of the palace of Aljafaria to better preserve it. As a sign of gratitude, the monarch exempted the residents from many taxes and granted them various royal favors and privileges. In 1398, when Sancho Garland was abbot of the monastery of Nuestra Señora de Piedra, monastery of Our Lady of the Stone, the king enriched the monastery with the relic of holy doubt along with many other temporal privileges. Since 1370, there have been countless miracles attributed to the sacred relic, including calming a tempest and protection from fires. We recall one such event. On July 5, 1593, the monastery was hit by a storm so great that large hailstones fell from the sky. Father Benito Casado, accompanied by the monks and other people, took the relic in a procession. He blessed the storm with the sign of the cross and immediately the dark clouds disappeared, the sun was seen and the hailstones descended like snowflakes. The miracle was authenticated by Dr. Thomas Amador, general vicar of the city of Calatayud. Many people who suffered demonic oppression and possession were liberated after visiting the monastery. 
Three of these exorcisms are recorded in the book Historia Sagrada del Santissimo Misterio Dubio de Simbala by Father Antonio Joaquim Sanz de Laria. We bring to mind the exorcism of Catalina Gomez in brief. On March 21, 1427, she arrived at the monastery with her relatives. During the initial exorcisms, it was revealed that there were sixty legions of infernal spirits in her. Their torments brought her great agony. After invoking our Lord, His Mother, and His Saints, and with the divine power of the holy relics, many infernal spirits were expelled from the woman. But the demons threatened to take revenge on the monks. The following night, at 2 a.m., while they woke up to pray the matins, they found the plaza and cloisters of the monastery filled with firewood from the nearby pine forest. Many attested to hearing voices that echoed, hit it, set it on fire, it's time to burn it. Abbot Miguel de Aria summoned the monks to perform exorcisms and bless the woods which they later used as firewood and furniture. During the latter exorcisms, Catalina was placed in the presence of the relic of the most holy doubtful mystery. After many prayers and supplications, all the infernal spirits were driven out. She happily returned to her hometown in Soria telling everyone of the good health, consolation, and favors she received from Jesus. On October 1, 1820, the government seized all the assets of the church and converted them into government property. On September 12 after protests, the relic was carried from the monastery in Piedra to Simbala in a walking procession. In 1823, Ferdinand VII repealed the laws of the previous government and in 1824 the relic was returned to the monastery. In 1836, by the order of the government, the monastic order was terminated and on December 5, the relics were transferred to Simbala where it lies today. A Hararian styled reliquary crafted in 1594 houses the sacred blood-stained corporal. In honor of this marvel, every year on the 12th of September, the relic of the altar linen soaked in blood is exposed and venerated with great respect and devotion. A solemn procession is led by the relic of the sacred blood-stained corporal on the anniversary of the Feast of the Miracle. This miracle of Simbala is recorded by historian Juan Alvaro Zapata, jurist, and historian Miguel Martinez del Villar, Benedictine friar Gregorio de Argais, Carmelite historian Roque Alberto Faisai, religious and scholar Vincencio Blasco de Lanuza, and Antonio Joaquim Sanz de Laria. Let us pray that the Eucharistic Lord may inspire us to love the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. Long live Christ the King! If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. I encourage you to donate so that I can make more of these videos. God bless.